Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, what a morning it's already been. It's so good to see you. If you don't know, if you're newer, newer, we filmed that bumper, the video, in our new sanctuary. Isn't that exciting? It's almost there, folks. So every week we're putting new images uh, on the screens. So when you leave, uh, check them out. Um, Well, school is back, right? It's good to see you. It's great to see our kids' program starting up. But it's also uh, football is back. So I promise I'm going to have you out before kickoff. When you wear your jerseys, you remind me, you're like, I'm planning to see kickoff, right? Okay, I'm with you. I love that. Um, Last week, we uh, launched all across the campus. Uh, We were at 20 schools, and we prayed over our schools. And of course, we just got to pray uh, with our our kids here today. And I got to say, I love this time of year. I love back to school. And one of the things I love is seeing back to school pictures. I've seen some of yours. Um, um, Our kids just knew how to humor us, and they knew that we were paying tuition. So they kept sending us back to school pictures all the way through college. Here's one of theirs right there. And, you know, they're both in graduate school and they're still sending us those and we're not paying their tuition anymore. So that's really good of them. Um, But not everyone is really happy about school like my kids are. Um, Here is one first day of school uh, picture. Uh, Maybe your kids feel like that. But uh, some of you are really happy, and this is my favorite uh, first day of school picture, because mom's like, you deserve a break, right? Okay, it's a good day. All right, school is starting. Uh, We're launching today this new series all about learning and growing because you may not have a backpack and you may not uh, wait for a school bus, uh, but you are not finished learning in your life. Uh, You don't get to take a break when you're in college. Uh, You don't get to take a break when your kids are keeping you up all night. Uh, You don't get to take a break when your job is overwhelming, and you don't get to take a break when you're retired. You get the theme? Uh, You were made to be a learner, and Jesus wants to be your teacher. Jesus himself wants you to be a lifelong learner. He wants you to follow him as your leader, and he wants you to grow as a disciple. You know, teachers are an incredibly significant part of our lives, And so um, I want you to think for a minute about your favorite teacher, okay? Maybe hard to come up with just one. You got the name? All right, we prayed earlier for our kids, but now before we uh, leave this back to school, I want to pray for our teachers. If you are a teacher or a coach or an administrator or a leader, and I'm talking from preschool to graduate school, if you're in the room, would you stand up so we can thank you? Y'all have had quite a couple of years. Man, can we thank our teachers? Woo, woo! Awesome. Thank you for all you do to invest in our kids. And uh, now I, I want to pray for you, and I want to pray for the teachers throughout the Lehigh Valley, but I also want to thank God for the teachers that have meant a lot to you, who poured in your life that you still remember. So um, I'm actually saying, say out loud the name. You're going to know in the prayer, uh, but say it loud. I want to hear, you, I want to hear those names, and of course, God will hear those names as, as a thankfulness. So let me pray. God, we thank you for all the teachers and administrators and coaches and people who are investing in the Lehigh Valley right here in uh, our students in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, God, as um, uh, we we think about them, we pray that you would bless them, that you would give them uh, your grace as they invest. And also, God, we know that teachers have shaped us. They're, they're who we are. They're how we found our careers or how we figured out we were good at something or how we uh, uh, made the team in college. Man, would you uh, hear the names of these people who we uh, bless because of the part they played in our lives? And we say their name right now. Charles, go. I want to hear them. Pray. God, hear those names. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Okay, you get like a C minus for that assignment. Okay, so I'm just saying, um, we'll ask you again. Um, all right, there are so many names in the Bible for Jesus. I mean, you, you could come up with a lot of names, but by far the most well known is that Jesus was a teacher. 60 times out of the 90 times that Jesus is arrested, he was called teacher. Jesus, of course, when he taught, he taught individuals. And Jesus taught big groups of people. And he used all kinds of teaching methods. I mean, you, you teachers have to do your lesson plans. Well, Jesus used stories. And he used object lessons. And he used questions. And he used exaggerations. Sometimes he taught in the synagogue. Sometimes he taught around the Sea of Galilee or on the mountaintop. Jesus, as a teacher, made an unmatched impact on the world. And folks, if you'll let him, he is still making it. See, Jesus was a master teacher. Jesus knew his subject. He was an expert. And in fact, he distinguished himself from all the other teachers at that time. Everyone who heard him was amazed. They, they knew he was unique. Here's how Matthew says it. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. See, Jesus knew the scriptures. He knew his material even when people would come up to him and they'd try to trick him or stump him. He was never stumped. But Jesus wasn't just a master teacher with his words. Jesus was a master teacher with his life. He modeled the things that he was teaching. He showed people the kingdom by who he was. He was the ultimate player coach. See, Jesus lived what he taught. Everyone knew he was different from any other teacher that they had heard teach. Here's how Eugene Peterson describes it in the message in the book of Matthew. It says this, when Jesus concluded his address, the crowd burst into applause. They had never heard teaching like this. It was apparent that he was living everything he was saying. Quite a contrast to their religion teachers. This was the best teaching they had ever heard. Jesus spent so much of his ministry teaching and of course, who he taught the most were those 12 disciples of his. They got to see Jesus up close and Jesus was always teaching and they were always learning. But it's interesting, there was only one time that the disciples asked Jesus to teach them. You think about all the things they saw Jesus do. Maybe they could have asked him, wow, Jesus, you turned water into wine. I want in on that. Teach me that. Or Jesus, you're walking on the water. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Will you show me how to do that? Teach me that. Or I guess if they really wanted to go big, they could say, Jesus, man, you, you brought Lazarus back from the dead. Teach us how to do that. They didn't ask any of those things. Here's what they asked. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Why prayer? His students, his disciples, spent so much time with Jesus. They were so close to him that they had to see Jesus' pattern of praying. They saw Jesus go away from them and they saw Jesus go away from the crowds. They noticed that prayer was a part of Jesus' life-giving routine. They noticed that Jesus was never too busy and Jesus was never too important to step away and pray. The disciples also noticed Jesus' pattern, Jesus' power in his prey. It was really obvious to them as they watched Jesus that what he was doing was connected to his praying. That whenever there was a big moment 
right before he was picking the disciples, or right before he was heading back to, into Jerusalem, or right before he was arrested and headed to the cross, they saw Jesus praying. And they saw the power that came when he prayed. Praying gave Jesus direction and purpose and kept him focused on his mission. And when the disciples saw that pattern and that power, they wanted to pray like that. The next few weeks, we're going to look at Jesus' answer, better known as the Lord's Prayer. We're going to look at it verse by verse, petition by petition. And I want to challenge you. We're going to challenge our kids. It's called the pastor's prize. If they will tell any of the pastors the Lord's Prayer, they get a, a, a prize from us. There's no prize for you except for you should do it too. Okay? If you don't know the Lord's Prayer, I hope you'll memorize it. Next week, we're going to give you a, a bookmark with that. Memorize that prayer. This is what Jesus wants us, how he wants us to pray. Now, maybe you say, I already know the prayer. And if you want to do a little more work, this is extra credit. There are three books that have been very helpful to me as I've studied for this series. Here they are. First, The Prayer of the Lord by R.C. Sproul. Incredible resource. The next one, Kevin DeYoung, The Lord's Prayer. Great resource. And finally, uh, J.I. Packer's Praying the Lord's Prayer. Highly recommend each of those. They're, they're great resources. All right, so to the prayer. The disciples asked Jesus, teach us to pray. And here's what he said. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven. Hey, say this with me. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Interesting, that's not in there. And you have to wait till the last week of the series to know why. Powerful prayer, perhaps the most famous prayer of all times. This prayer has been prayed by people uh, since Jesus prayed it all over the world, people of all ages. And it's been a prayer that's been prayed in lots of difficult moments in people's lives. Hard to believe that it's been 21 years since 9-11. And I read this week about how John Mahoney was in the North Tower, and of course, when the plane hit, no one knew what was going on, and so he was in shock, and all he could see was smoke and, and water coming from mechanical things, and, and he, he tried to make his way to the stairs, and he was looking around for his colleagues to try to get them to go with him, and he thought, I should pray, and so he started praying, our Father, and he couldn't really remember all the words. He was in so much commotion trying to do things, and but then he could. Then he remembered the words. And as he gathered people and as they made their way through that smoke, they prayed, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And the rest of the Lord's prayer. And he explains that when he prayed that prayer, all of a sudden he had peace. All of a sudden he knew, just like we told our students with those tags, he knew that God was with them. And he kept praying the Lord's Prayer until he got out of those towers. This prayer shows up two times in the Gospels. In Matthew 6, when Jesus teaches the prayer there, it's, it's, a, it's a part of the Sermon on the Mount. And then in Luke 11, we just read the Luke version. Of course, the disciples had asked Jesus to teach them to pray. Some people say it would be better called the disciples' prayer. It's, the Lord taught it to us, but it's a prayer that Jesus meant for us to know and to pray. Jesus said, when you pray, say these things. 
Now, I love that. I love that he starts it that way before he even gets to the Our Father. He says, when you pray, say. See, Jesus, when he teaches this prayer, he assumes that the people who follow him will want to pray like he does. That they'll want to talk to God. That they'll be drawn to, to God and they'll want to be in this relationship with him that gets better when you talk to him. Many of you know that my dad died about two years ago and sometimes that seems like just yesterday and sometimes it seems like oh, it was forever ago. His birthday was last month and I, I, I scrolled and I, I listened to some of the last voicemails that I heard. I, I wanted to hear his voice. But oh, if I could tell you how many times I wish I could pick up the phone and talk to him. See, when Jesus says, you can pray, He's saying, you don't have to wait. You can go to the Father. The Father wants to hear you pray. He wants to answer you. That's what Jesus is telling his followers. You can talk. You should talk. You need to talk to your Father. He made you to talk to him. He made you to want to be with him. And that's why Jesus starts this prayer with two simple words. Our Father. It's interesting, as I've done my study, did you know that Jewish folks had never prayed to the Father? The German theologian, Joachim Jeremias, he searched all of the Old Testament and all the, the, the rabbinic resources <laughs> And he did not find one example of, of any Jew praying to God as father before the 10th century. The same scholar uh, studied Jesus' prayers. And all but one of his prayers address Jesus as father. See, Jesus models praying father. He does it himself. But he also teaches us to pray our Father. Praying our Father is a radical new way of praying that Jesus gives us. It's exclusively, exclusively for people who follow Jesus because only through Jesus can we be the children of God. See, it's a new kind of intimacy that Jesus made us to have. John 1 says it this way. He sa it says, Yet to all who did receive Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. See, because of Jesus, we pray with him, our Father. Now, it can be really easy to skip past those first two words. But it's interesting, we pray our Father, not my Father. When you pray, Jesus says, you're not just praying to your Father, you're praying to our Father. We get to be and pray to our Father because we are adopted, we're together in that. Now, if you have a broken relationship with your Father, this prayer can seem really wrong and really painful. See, God's plan is that our earthly fathers should point us to our heavenly father. That's his plan. But even at their absolute best, I want you to hear this, even, even at their best, earthly fathers cannot give you what your heavenly father has in store for you. See, after Jesus teaches this prayer, he keeps teaching them this. He wants them to understand. Your earthly father is designed to point you to your heavenly father, but your heavenly father gets it right every time. Here's what he says. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? 
Don't miss this. Jesus is inviting us to pray to our heavenly Father who is all giving, all good, all loving. What Jesus is pointing us to is that prayer is this kind of relationship with someone who wants the best for you and is able to deliver on it. That's the kind of father you're to pray to. That's who God is. And God shows you that when he so loved the world that he sent his son. See, he gave his own son so you could be his son and be his daughter. And you could pray our father. See, prayer is based on that intimate relationship and Jesus wants you to have it. Praying R is also really important because, I mean, look, look around you. You're with brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're designed to pray together. And when things are hard in your life, there should be people in your life who can pray with you. There should be people in your life who can pray for you. See, it's our Father, and God wants us to pray that together. God wants us to pray and be together. Our Father, who art in heaven. It's interesting, that's a description of God. Jesus is saying, yes, pray to our Father, but no, he's in heaven. What Jesus wants us to know is that our Father is personal, but our Father is also powerful. Here's another way of thinking about it. Our intimacy with him doesn't limit his immensity. What a thing. You get to pray to the Father who made the heavens and the earth. He spoke and everything happened. You get to pray the one who made you in your mother's womb. You get to pray to the one who has power to do anything. God is personal. Pray that way. But also know that he is powerful, folks. He is worth praying to. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> how many of you, how many of you uh, this week said a sentence that had the word hallowed in it? Right, none of you, <laughs> right, right. That is a weird word, hallowed. It's grandparents' day, so I'm gonna pick on you grandparents. I love hanging out with you grandparents, and here's one of the reasons why. You love to tell stories about your grandkids. You've got pictures of your grandkids. You're dying for everyone to know about your grandkids. It is awesome. You, want, you love them and you want them to be known, right? Okay, you want their name to be hallowed. Okay, that's the first step for hallowed. But it goes even beyond that. If you were to look at the, the Greek of this word, it means holy, hallowed means holy. But hallowed be thy name isn't a description of God. So you've prayed our Father who art in heaven. That's about God, that's a description of him. But when you get to hallowed be thy name, it's not a description. It is a petition. You are praying, God, make your name holy. God, your name should be great. God, you're amazing. You're famous. It's a petition. And Jesus wants us to pray like that because Jesus knows that we can't do it. We can't hallow God's name. We're imperfect. God makes his name famous. God does that. So when you pray, hallowed be thy name, you're saying, ah, God, I want your name to be known. I want you to be famous, but you're gonna have to do that because you're God. And I'd love to be in on it. 
We're saying there is no one like God. There's a great ancient Jewish prayer that often was the last prayer in the synagogue that gets to this idea. Here it is. Exalted and hallowed be his great name in the world, which he created according to his will. May he let his kingdom rule in your lifetime and in your days and the lifetime of the whole of Israel speedily and soon. Love that prayer. See, we want God to make his name known. We want God to make his name known throughout the Lehigh Valley. And that includes through us. We want God to use us to make him famous. See, there will be a day when everyone will know the name of God. But until then, we pray that more would know, that more would know his his famous name and know how great he is and know the power and the, the, the blessing that he'll bring to your life if you give him worship. Hallowed be your name. For the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at each of these wonderful phrases in the Lord's Prayer. But what I'm hoping, what I'm praying for us is that when we pray this prayer, because I hope we're all going to memorize it, but when we pray, our Father, there's a host of other things that we pray because we we know God is our Father. We pray the prayer of our hearts as God Jesus guides us with this model prayer. So when we pray, our Father, there's more. When we pray, who art in heaven, there's more for us to say. And when we pray, hallowed be his name, there's more for us to pray. As we close our service, I want us to model that. I'm going to say those words, and I want you in your heart to talk to God. This one you don't have to do out loud. But pray in your heart. Pray to God your Father. Pray that he's in heaven, his power. And then pray, hallowed be your name. Put it in your words. Let's pray. Jesus, teach us to pray. Our Father. art in heaven hallowed be thy name Jesus thank you for coming into our world as a master teacher You showed us the kingdom and you showed us what it looks like to be a part of the Father's world and his plan. But thank you for doing so much more than teach. You gave yourself when you died in our place on the cross. You gave your life so that we could pray our Father. So in these days, in these months, Lord Jesus, teach us.